Hey guys, Clay here. Welcome to my Fury Weird Gear Guide from Battle of the Tsar Allure. In this video, we're going to go over all the gear that can drop from the raid and kind of talk about what's going to be the best in slot and which ones you should be rolling on. Of course, the sheet that you see in front of you, I will link it at the bottom of the description so you can access this. Basically, there are a good amount of gear uh, that drops in the raid. And of course, with Mythic Plus, with the new Titanium Residuum system, you can, of course, buy one of your or even all three of your gear eventually from that if you don't like the ones that are in the raid. But let's take a look at what can actually drop since you guys are going to be getting these first, right? It's, it's very likely that you're going to be wearing, you know, two from the raid and then you're going to buy one with the residuum later on. So first things first, the row here, these are the items that I think are best in slot. And if I included like a second item that are next to it, it just means that they're kind of similar in value. And of course, the thing with the Azrite traits, the biggest thing I want to mention is that an individual Azrite piece coming up isn't going to be that great by itself. You have to see as a Fury Warrior how it matches up with the other two pieces of Azrite gear you have. Right? A general rule of thumb going into the new raid is you want one Unbridled Ferocity, you want one Simian Rage, and one Cold Steel Hot Blood is good. You don't have to have it, but as long as your crit isn't super low, uh, having one cold steel hot blood it's good and then as far as for the rest of the three traits you kind of want a combination of reckless flurry treasure trait doesn't matter if you mix them doesn't matter if you have all three of one or you know all three of the other sometimes if you just can't get anything it's okay if you have one of the other traits but ideally you do want something that resembles this type of setup right here uh, especially you want one and bridal ferocity and one summoning rage those two traits just having one of those traits is best in slot for both single target and aoe and that's kind of the good thing about fury in regards to azurite traits you don't have to worry about too much for aoe and single target you can kind of just use the same gear setup as far as for the third ring of talents it's the same thing as it's been all expansion overwhelming power is the best trait still and then gut ripper he might call come up afterwards Gut Ripper is better in a single target, and then Hema Call is better in an AOE, but they're relatively similar. And this is very important because you'll see, you know, when you're looking at gear right now from the raid that drops, some gear might look better if you only pay attention to the first two rings. But because that specific Azurite piece doesn't have overwhelming power, and the competing ones do, it will lose in power to it. Uh, one thing where that's really evident is the chest piece that drops on raid. We'll get to that in a second. The best one is going to be the one that has overwhelming power. There's two, but th the other one has better as right traits. And as far as for stat rankings, generally your stat rankings, dependent on whether or not you have a cold steel hot blood, this is very important. It's a trait that probably has the most effect in how the rest of your gear might look. If you have a cold steel hot blood, the value of your crit goes up. So then your stat rankings are more like haste crit and then you have mastery second and then versatility last. If you don't have any cold steel hot blood, then the value of crit does drop down. Um, sometimes it can drop down so dramatically that crit is the last. Sometimes, you know, if you just somehow had low crit, then it can be even with mastery. So just know that your stat weights is generally going to be haste mastery reverse and the value of crit is just depending on whether or not you have a cold steel hot blood trait or not. All right, and then as far as for this little table here on the right, these are just, you know, looking at the chart here, how many loot drops are on this initial part here. And the two bosses that I've highlighted uh, are kind of the ones that you could reroll on. So I definitely recommend you rolling on Champion of the Light every single week because it does drop our best in slot weapon and getting a really high eye level weapon is kind of hard in other places and getting it from a raid is probably your best bet. Oh, and another point on stat weights, if you guys wanna look at it, so I'm wearing like all the gear from the new raid, right? You can see the Sims, right? Haste and uh, crit right here are pretty even, right? Only 0 0.01 different and then you have mastery and then you have verse and then strength now is low again, of course. You know we're further on to the expansion the value of strength isn't as high as it was when we first started so there's the sims uh, i'll provide a link to this too if you guys want because you can always click on this full html report and look at the sims there are some issues right now with sims i can't get it to use active trinkets so you kind of have to ignore the two active trinkets when you get to it i'll have an updated video when it does work so just kind of ignore the active trinkets as far as where this video is concerned so as far as our gear there's two weapons right crash of tides Crit versatility, Dawnbreaker, Haste Mastery. Basically, 
I think the way you want to look at this, if the gear has haste, and then of course we're talking with Colossal Hot Blood, if it has crit, you're going to use it. Mastery is still good too, but so since this one has versatility, you're going to use Dawnbreaker. Of course, if you somehow get a crash of tides that's higher eye level than Dawnbreaker, it's probably going to be better to use that anyways. But we're talking about equivalent eye levels. Dawnbreaker is going to be the one you want to go for as far as we're best in slot, right? So luckily, there's no unique equip as far as weapons are concerned. So you can just dual wield two of these and you'd be good to go. As far as for helmet is concerned, this is one of those things where when you look at only the first two traits with so the level 15 and the level 31 traits, something like the Crown of Bloody Succession will actually look really good because it has Cold Steel Hot Blood, it has Reckless Flurry, and you're like, great. Because if you want to go for 3x Reckless Flurry and then or 3x Treacherous Trait, you're going to need a Reckless Flurry or a Treacherous Covenant and one of those you know, two rings, right? So it looks really good. But the problem is when you look at the level 36 row, you have Blood Siphon, Elemental World, Strength Numbers, not really that great. Elemental World is the best, but it doesn't really compete to some of the other stuff, right? And that's where the Helmet, Helm of Tempered Jade can come ahead in that it does have He Might Call and Gut Ripper. You know, both of the traits are really good. You're probably going to use Gut Ripper in regards to, you know, progression stuff because it does do more damage, right? The lower the boss is going to be. And that's kind of where you can shine because people are going to start dying. And, you know, Execute Phase does get prolonged a little bit in progression fights. And, of course, this has Unbridled Ferocity and Treasure's Covenant or Simian Rage. You basically, once you have your other two pieces, you kind of look at which ones you should pick. And you want pieces of gear where both the first ring and the second ring have really viable options. For example, this Glacier Crest helmet, it does have Simian Rage and Reckless Flurry in the first ring, great. But on the second ring, you're really gonna be only picking Infinite Fury and it's not that great. It's okay of a trait, but it's not something that you really wanna get. So that's why, as far as for helmet's concerned on the list, I do have Helmet Temper Jade as the best in slot. Okay, so as far as the shoulders are concerned, these three shoulders, are all kind of relatively even. But as far as for what is the absolute best when you sim all three of these shoulders next to each other in regards to using all three rings, the Dino Sprocket Spalder does edge out a little bit ahead. But to be honest, if you really wanted to, you could just play with Ridge Plate Pauldrons if you want, just so you can have Reckless Flurry in there if you somehow your gear doesn't have one, right? So it's not that big of a deal in regards to the shoulders. Just know that Dino Sprocket Spalders is does edge out just a little bit over the Ridge Plate Pauldrons. And of course, the third one here is, is kind of meh. As far as for the cloak is concerned, this is kind of easier because they all have stats, right? Your best stats, the crit haste, are going to be on this cloak. Not only that, but the set bonus here gives you an increase 150 to your primary stat while you're in Zoldazar. I assume that works in a raid because this is the item from the raid, so a free 150 stat not bad take it of course you're gonna have to get the ring that goes along with it but the ring's pretty good too as far as the chest piece is concerned like i mentioned in the earlier in the video this is the piece where when you take a look at the level 37 row it really matters right so so the first one breastplate of divine purification it looks really good once again it has all the traits that we kind of want but the level 37 trait does not have overwhelming power that these two other traits have and that's why it's not going to be the abyss and actually the abyss does turn out to be breastplate of the death bound even though you know you're not getting either reckless flurry or treacherous covenant here you kind of have to go for like simian rage and cold steel hot blood but it's okay i think once you do all the combination with the three best gear here you end up having infinite fury in one of the slots but it's not too horrible to do that this one has overwhelming power too but it just doesn't sim as well as the other one i think mainly because this one on the level 32 trait you have to pick unbridled ferocity but you end up picking unbridled ferocity on the helmet or shoulders anyways so or chest breastplate of the death bound now as far as for the rest of the gear is relatively easy because you can just plug it into simc and see what happens and you can do that with the azurite trace too but right here is mainly just based on your stat waste too right so both of these wrists sim actually very evenly and that's why on the list this is the only of those pieces that i have on there with both they do sim very very similarly and i think the biggest reason why is that even though this one has haste first and this one has haste crit both are good traits i think this one having a little bit of haste is not that bad and i think with all the gear combined, there's actually not going to be that much versatility gear. So it's always okay to have some of the stat, even if it's your worst, right? And then as far as for gloves are concerned, it's just going to be the Crusade Pummelers from Champions of Light. Crit Haste, great. You know, the other ones versus Mastery, no thank you. As far as for waist are concerned, we're going to go with the Whole Plate Girdle here. Crit Mastery, right, versus the Crit Verse. So 
right? Pick up the one that has the crit mastery instead. Legs and feet are really easy. There's only one piece that drops, so there you go. You don't really have a choice there as far as for what comes from a raid, right? For ring is concerned, I mentioned earlier with the cloak, it's going to pair up with one of the rings. It's going to be the seal of the Xanalarian Empire. It has really high amount of haste in it great you do want this because you get that 150 free primary stat right and as far as for the other ring you're going to want to pick up the lord admiral signet this one has haste and a buttload of mastery on it and the reason why you pick this ring over the third ring because the third ring doesn't have haste in it and it has a really a ton of versatility so as far as the ring relatively easy you just don't want the band of multi-sided strikes and you just want you know, the other two as far as where trink is concerned ever chill anchor does look really really strong it does i think around six percent of your damage right now on sims and as long as you can keep up time on the boss at least every 12 seconds the dot goes up to 10 stacks and it does a really good amount of damage as far as where the active trink is like i mentioned i can't sim both of these yet on simc but it does look like the Gronz primary range is going to be pretty good for anything we need like burst damage or anything AOE, it does seem like, I don't know exactly how much increased damage that it's gonna do when it hits multiple targets, but it does look good. Of course, this is gonna be just like Drought of Souls. When you use them, you can't move or use abilities while you're channeling it. This is longer though, four seconds. Might not seem long, but in a mechanically intensive fight, four seconds standing still uh, is a pretty long time. Now, of course, it will probably also immune you to knockback. So if there's any boss like, Better Devour, for example, that has a knockback, this will probably immune you from that too. This trinket is the second on use trinket. It gives you a really, really ridiculous amount of haste. At the mythic level, it gives you 88. The other levels aren't really that much lower. At the mythic level right now, if I got full stacks, it more than doubles the current amount of haste that I have. So it's more than lust actually when this gets fully stacked up. Of course, you're not gonna be fully stacked up the entire time because this has to ramp up the stacking. But it does seem like it might be pretty good for single target. Of course, I will have to test both of these once the Sims are working on that. But as far as for the gear that you can get from the raid, hopefully that was helpful in helping you guys determine, you know, what is going to be better for you, what's going to be worse for you. And of course, your best friend is just going to be to sim any pieces that you might have questions about, you know, if you think something might be better or not. But generally for Fury Warriors, it's relatively, I think, balanced in that you kind of just want to go for higher eye level. You will generally be able to work something out if you pick the piece with higher eye level. You know, our stat weights isn't crazy bad. I know versatility is lower than the other three stats, but it's okay, right, if you have one or two pieces of versatility on it. I think getting higher eye levels, you know, getting the high drops are good. Uh, you don't have to worry about that too much. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy your time in Battle for the Zara lore. I will be coming out with the commentary videos for all the boss fights once we do them. I'll actually do them all this time. And as always, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Feel free to subscribe to see more. See ya.